Welcome back. So starting out the week, I started attending to some problems that uh, surfaced there on Friday. And the first was not enough clearance on the either side of this little uh, cover plate there for the throttle. So I had to sort of uh, just uh, make those a little bit wider. And the easiest way to do a nice job was with the machine. So just running it by hand um, through there, just manually stepping it along there. Uh, but uh, got that done, so that fits nicely now. And uh, Jeff is uh, in the process now of getting this uh, second wing there, the uh, right hand wing, ready for the lower skin closeout. And as you can see, he's got the skin in place there, and it's uh, looking like it's fitting nicely. So just prepping up everything for that. And then um, once uh, those guys get that one done, the next uh, job is to move on to getting the uh, skins there for the winglets. Uh, done that the outer edges that is, still hasn't been done yet but uh, as you can see because we don't have a clamping device still got to rivet everything in place there um, so it means it's still going to have some body work where all those rivet holes ended up being but it is on the lower side so it won't be very visible uh, anyway so here you can see they got that skin bonded on now and uh, clamped in place so all the high sole was laid down and similar to the one uh, that you saw last week so that's um, another bit of a milestone there. Second uh, lower skin there bonded into place on the wings. So getting uh, close to having all those wings closed out. So my next job was to get on and finish off um, the pressure installing the pressurization little controller that we did, a little Arduino. And the first thing I had to do was uh, just um, do a bit of basic wiring and run a, a power line over towards over where that unit is installed there on the uh, left side baggage compartment so we've got this little fuse box that Dan installed in there and I had a spare fuse in there so I uh, just hooked up to that and uh, ran out sort of um, I think it was a 14 gauge or 16 gauge line over there just to uh, supply power to that unit because it's not just for the unit but it's also for the solenoids the ones that that uh, open and close the valves that allow um, the um, pressurized air coming in off the turbos to go into the cabin or not. And so uh, the next thing I had to do was um, create or put on a couple of connectors and I'm using these uh, little Deutsch connectors, the, um, the ones that are weatherproof. And uh, just putting uh, an end there on the power line that comes out of the Arduino because we're just powering it with 12 volts. Uh, Arduino is pretty cool. You can run it off of USB, but you can also just run it off of 12 volts or actually I think quite a, a varied range of voltage. So it's just easier just to run it off of 12. So putting a connector on there and then uh, just creating another wire that's going to be basically spliced into that um, the power wire that I ran over there earlier to where it all lives. And um, this way, because I'm putting a connector on there, if I need to remove the Arduino from the ship for any reason like if I want to do maintenance on it or if I want to pull it out and and uh, you know hook up and flash different code on it uh, in the office or whatever or you know outside of the the ship I can do that um, if I didn't put a connector on there it would be difficult to do that it would mean you know I'd have to go and uh, you know cut wires or whatever um, fortunately the Arduino has a way um, or has a little USB port on it um, that you can power it but also that's how you flash code on there and I've, what I've done is I've left it so there's a little opening in the um, weatherproof case at the bottom there which fortunately the, the whole opening aligns with the um, with the USB port so while it's sitting and bolted into the fuselage I can go there with my laptop and just plug in the USB cord directly into the Arduino and then flash you know changes to the code on there if, if that's something I want to do and I know it is because you know right now it's set up uh, with certain parameters in there uh, for you know how it starts up and there's probably a likelihood that I want to start it up um, and not have it turned on or you know have it actually pressurizing the cabin and then actually you have to manually sort of switch it on using um, my phone with the Bluetooth connection so you know just being able to um, you know flash different code on there is definitely an advantage so I got the first connector done there on the Arduino the one that's going to receive the power and now I'm just creating a little pigtail 
with um, the opposite connector, male, female, uh, that's going to actually bring the power in and that one will be spliced into that power cord uh, that, I was, that I took over there to the baggage, uh, left side baggage compartment earlier, which we'll see in a minute. Um, so uh, having done this now, there you can see there's the connector done and then that one plugs into the one for the Arduino and uh, just mates in there nicely. I made sure that I got my positive and negative around the right way and there's the Arduino sitting there in the waterproof box and the other connector on there is for the wires for the sensors for the pressure and temperature coming off the engine. So here we are in the baggage compartment and, and you are actually in the baggage compartment right now. You're sort of sitting against the um, left back wall there. So it's actually, um, I thought it was going to be much more difficult to um, work inside the baggage compartment once we closed everything out there, but uh, those doors are huge. <laughs> really makes it easy to get in there and do stuff. And you know, there's a lot of stuff in there right now and, and wiring and everything like that. But ultimately for production, you know, the idea would be to clean everything up and then have just a couple of cover panels over all the wiring and stuff. And then so it's nice and clean um, and, and you can put things in there without worrying about damaging stuff, so especially even things like this. So there you can see I got the Arduino and I've just got it loosely mounted there on the on that wall there. Um, that's the wall, sort of a back firewall of the engine. And the reason why I haven't, you know, not fully tightening up the mounting bolts here is because ultimately they'll have to come out briefly when we um, put the um, reflective heat shield on the other side of the firewall once we take the engine off um, before we transport that aircraft up to the airport. Um, so because we're not going to do that with the engine on, we'll do it with it off. And uh, here Jeff and Devon are just in the process of um, looking at what's involved with getting these uh, winglet skins uh, sorted out and bonded on and um, just trying to figure out the alignment and we actually ended up having a little bit of a fitment issue on these ones right there at the curve on the top and uh, we were just trying to weigh up our options it was like the spar was too thick but uh, anyway I'll go over that in a little bit in a detail in uh, sorry in a little bit more detail in a minute and uh, so here we are back in the baggage compartment here and i am got the fun task there of just grouping the wires that came across so we've got the power wire coming across there and then um, there's a couple of other wires there for sensor wires um, from one of the pressure gauges um, up in the engine and so just putting a little bit of electrical tape there just to keep those together and then uh, I'm going to um, put some of that uh, spaghetti around there that black stuff like you see there on the top bit there and then that strap that's hanging down there that's um, one of the parachute straps that you've seen a while ago that goes with the anchors down on the gear there and uh, goes up through uh, the roof compartment area so there and getting all that taped up and uh, the fun job of putting this stuff on actually went on pretty easy probably the easiest I've ever had it as you can see there normally I fight with that stuff um, and ultimately uh, I'll probably put some little um, mounting tabs there on the wall there and some ADL clamps just to hold that in place there so it's nice and uh, tidy. So this job took me the best part of the morning um, today and uh, all that was left to do now was to test it and make sure it was powering on when the ship came on and that I could connect to it over the Bluetooth and that everything was looking good and the solenoids were clicking on and off. So here I'm just walking around the front there and about to turn the ship power on and as you'll see it uh, fires this up up and it starts flashing there and that's the little Bluetooth module that's flashing red there and uh, ultimately when you connect to it over Bluetooth it changes color and there you can see it's gone blue and uh, there's the display coming out of it and that's the stuff that I coded that if you've been following you've seen a while ago and that's just giving me all the parameters coming out of it and just refreshes every five seconds or ten seconds or whatever I got it set to I can't remember and from there I can actually just manually you know, just send single character commands to stop it or change the altitude setting for when it comes on and or to make it run again or whatever. There's a bunch of different parameters you can change in there for what I coded up. And uh, so that's all working now and that's good. That's another job that I can just um, cross off my list of things that still needed to be done. And so I can now I can move um, back into the cabin and just finish off some more of the wiring stuff. 
And uh, so here's uh, um, Jeff got the skins sort of uh, sorted out in terms of how they were going to live. And so we put the rudders on there, just sat them in place just to make sure everything's lining up nicely. And as you can see, it's looking good. The trailing edges are matching up with the wing and the gap spacing and all the angles all look good. So that's how the winglet's going to look. And uh, back in the baggage compartment here, um, I just wanted to show you finally how this ended up looking there. And you see I also put a little spade connector in there for the power. So I, I can just disconnect that at will so it doesn't come on, especially now because, you know, right now if I turn it on, it's trying to pressurize the cabin and such and just don't want to do that. Uh, so just disconnected that spade connector. And so here Jeff's got, uh, now that we've uh, fixed this fitment issue, so we decided basically just to kind of push the problem into one little area there at the very leading edge because what was happening was that skin was sitting a little high at the curve there at the top. And uh, so we just sort of let it sit there and we're just going to have a gap to fill there on the front edge of that. And uh, you'll see that again in a little bit. And uh, meanwhile, Devin's been working on uh, creating this little bracket um, that goes on the intake scoop and it joins the left and right side. So he's got these two face plates here. Those are actually not going to, this is just showing them sitting in the intake tray, but they're going to be on the scoop themselves. And then that steel bracket joining them together. And then from there, we'll have um, a linear actuator in order to be able to lift this thing up and down, open and close it. So there's the bracket and Devin sort of cut that out and the holes need to be drilled in it, but we'll do that after it's been uh, um, welded up. So a little, another little side job for Brit. So here's the Jeff's little fix for this. Um, just added a few extra layers in here on the leading edge and that's just built, built that up so when the skin goes on, there's not a gap there. And I still haven't figured out what happened there, but somewhere in the CAD somewhere we made a mistake and and uh, the spar was fitting too tight there under that skin so we'll have to figure that out later on and figure out a way to fix it um, for production and lastly I spent the afternoon in the cabin here um, I wasn't getting um, backup power going to the audio panel so I got that sorted out but still uh, when I'm just running on backup power I see the radio is on but I'm not hearing anything so I still need to figure that out and uh, the problem that I had on Friday where I wasn't uh, getting audio or hearing the intercom was simply my headset. I just had to sw switch it from mono to stereo mode, so that fixed that. And I tried actually messing with it, the same thing uh, for this problem, but no luck yet. So it's something I still have to resolve, and there's a few other things to do there, but um, things are happening and moving along. Anyway, that's our update for the first half of this week, and um, thanks again for watching, and tune in again on Saturday and uh, see what we get up to. Mm -hmm.